Hello, you guys. Today we're going to be solving the May 2022 times on one biology paper one. So I recently got my IB exam scores back and I scored a seven on my May 2024 paper one. So I'm going to begin solving these with you guys and teaching you some strategies and tips and tricks to solve these paper ones. So I'm going to try to finish this today. I don't know if I'll manage to, but I'll try. So let's begin with the first question. So a cell contains chloroplast plasma membrane and ATS ribosomes. I'm gonna make this a bit thicker. Okay, um, so what could it be? So we know that because it has ATS ribosomes, it cannot be a prokaryote because a prokaryote has 70S ribosomes. Now don't take this much time in writing the exams, but yeah, it can't be a neuron because it has a no chloroplast in neurons. And it also cannot be a lymphocyte, so thus it's a bryophyte because a bryophyte has chloroplast because it's green, it's a plant, um, it's in the plant phylus, plasma membrane, and ATS ribosomes, because it's a plant, so that's it. So for the second question, we have more than 90% of cholesterol is located, cellular cholesterol is located in the cell's plasma membrane, so we have cholesterol. What is the main role of cholesterol in the plasma membrane of a mammalian? So we have a role of cholesterol, that's the main point, role of a mammalian set. So we also have this as another keyword and plasma membrane. So these are all keywords. So role in plasma membrane, here we do know that it is to regulate membrane solubility because it does not increase it necessarily. It does not increase membrane solubility necessarily. It does not increase membrane permeability. It does not regulate membrane temperature. So this is its actual role. So in this case, it's more straightforward than the other question. So it's A. Now, for the third question, what is required for facilitated diffusion? So we do know that facilitated diffusion does go, it means that it does go from a low to a high concentration gradient. So, yeah, it's concentration gradient. Hence, sorry, I'm writing this down. It's going to require some energy, right? And what will help it is not necessarily, actually, no, it does not require energy necessarily, but actually does require some assistance. And what will the assistance be? A channel protein as well. So we do know that it's going up a concentration gradient, so this is one of them, but also requires a channel protein, so it, which can help it go through because it cannot go through the gradient. Hence, the right answer is B. Okay. So what cell component arose first during the earliest formation of cells? So in this case, this one's a bit more straightforward. So we're just going to have to go with plasma membrane because this is just something you memorize, something you know. It's not completely something where you have to do some analysis, right? So in this case, this is B. Now for question five. Um, so this is actually an analysis question. In the Jap in the Japan Japanese, um, the haploid number, so haploid, keep this in mind, the haploid number of chromosomes is 24. Chromosomes is 24. How many sister chromatids are present in G2 phase of the somatic cell, such as in the bo bone marrow? Okay, so okay, so they're just giving us somatic cell, okay. So we do know that the haploid, so we do know that the haploid number is 24. So haploid is N. Okay, haploid, which is N, is 24, right? So diploid, which is 2N, is 48. And in this case, what are they asking? They're asking about the sister chromatids, right? So we do know that in each chromosome, there's two sister chromatids, right? Sister chromatid. Sorry, my handwriting isn't the best. So then we have to multiply 48 times two. So we're going to get 96. That's it. And keep in mind that in the biology paper one, you're not allowed to have calculators. So this is our final answer. So what are linked by hydrogen bonds? Okay, interesting. So we have water molecules. So a water molecule is H2O, right? 
So we do know that e the, the different, so we do know that there's something called polarity, right? We do know that H plus H is positive. O is negative. Hence, the water molecules, so we have here O for oxygen, and we have hydrogen, hydrogen. Then we have hydrogen bonds connecting oxygen with hydrogen. So it's between different... Um, so it's between hydrogen and oxygen and different molecules because one is positively charged, which is H, and one is negatively charged, which is O. So thus, they are attracted to each other from different ones because it's not within the same molecule, no. Phosphate and sugar within the DNA molecule, no. This has nothing to do with it because, again, we talked about hydrogen bonds, right? And base and sugar between the nucleotides, no. So it's hydrogen and oxygen because they're asking us about a hydrogen bond, okay? So now we need to know which reaction occurs when a dipeptide is formed from amino acids. So we do know that um, amino acids are basically the smallest, smallest, smallest particles of a protein. And then you have what's after a, a, a amino acid? A dipeptide, and after a dipeptide, you have a full protein, right? Okay, so this means that you need, let's say, two amino acids, so amino acid one, let's say, plus amino acid two, right? So when these two form, they form a dipeptide. Hence, this will not need hydrolysis because hydrolysis is a breaking down. Hydrolysis is basically breaking down a molecule and it results in the release of water, which is H2O. So this is not it. It's not transcription because this is just what when it comes to DNA. And it's not oxidation, it's condensation. Because basically what happens is that the two amino acids will basically form one um yeah they'll basically form one molecule which is the dipeptide so two molecules would form one molecule so then they're going to end up um basically combining so this is what will happen so yeah Okay, guys, but I just said something wrong. I just realized that I mixed these two up. So basically, condensation actually is the one that releases H2O, which is water, and break breaks down. Oh, the because the when when this happens, water is released. So basically, condensation is. Okay, sorry, guys. One second. I made. I just said a small wrong thing. So basically, condensation does lead to water, as a byproduct, but hydrolysis release is basically a breakdown of molecules, which releases two molecules. It does not release water. Condensation releases water. So this will be the dipeptide plus H2O. Okay, guys, got it. Sorry for the misconception. I didn't notice. Um, I just realized. So then you have in question eight, the graph shows enzyme activity plotted against temperature. So we have the activity of the enzymes in percentage, then you have the temperature. So now we have the question, what was, so we have temperature. So we do know that several things affect the enzyme activity. We have temperature and we also have pH, but in this case, it's temperature. What is the reason for the drop in enzyme activity above 40 C? Um, okay, so basically, you have a decrease in the enzyme concentration, but that is not true because we, we do see that the drop begins around here, right? And we do know that um, enzymes, they work at the optimum temperature. So they have an optimum temperature where they work at their best. So that's their optimum temperature and this is it. 
here. This is where its activity is the highest, approximately around the 100 percentage, given more or less. Um, but then it starts decreasing. And the reason it starts decreasing is because the temperature becomes too high, causing denaturation. And keep in mind that when the enzyme is denatured, it cannot go back to its original state. Okay, so a decrease in the enzyme concentration, that is not true because um, the, it's plotted against temperature. So keep that in mind. So this is not true. Reaction is saturated because active sites are occupied. No, because if this was true, then the reaction would look somewhere like this. And again, it would not be plotted against temperature. This is also false. Insufficient activation for energy to proceed. Again, no, because we're plotted against temperature and the temperature is increasing. So no. So changes to the conformation of the enzyme. Yes. And why is that? Because again, once denaturation takes place, the 3D shape uh, uh, conformation of the enzyme changes. And again, this is irreversible. The enzyme cannot go back to its normal original state. Um, now, a molecule of DNA is found to contain 200 guanine bases, representing 25% of the total number of bases. How many phosphates does this molecule of DNA contain? So we do know that it has, so they're asking that, um, that about the amount of phosphate groups the molecule contains, right? Okay. And they're saying that there's 200 guanine bases, which represent the 25% total number, right? So therefore, 25%. But they're asking about the phosphate, right? So we need a hundred percent. So we what we just do is that twenty five times four is equivalent to hundred, right? So two hundred times four is equivalent to eight hundred. So here we go. Our answer is C. A very very simple. So for the next question. What is the minimum number of nucleotides needed to, co to code for a polypeptide composed of 200 amino acids? Okay, so they're asking about the mini minimum number of nucleotides required to code for a polypeptide. So we do know that we need three, right? So the answer is 210 times three. Because we need basically three amino acids for each nucleotide. So each nucleotide contains of, wait, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I think I said something wrong. So yeah, actually the answer is 630 because each one contains three, like I was saying, okay. So that's why. 11. Um, so this is a tricky question. The graph shows the changes in lactate measured in the athlete's blood during exercise. So we have the blood lactate concentration and we have increasing exercise intensity. So which hypothesis provides the most likely explanation for the curve? As, ex as exercise increases, lactate is converted back to glucose. This is wrong. And lactate is not. So this is like just false information. I'm not going to like... This is false. Anaerobic exercise results in high levels of lactate. So this is true. Per lactate provides energy for intense exercise. No, because this is when a lactate like happens when there's a breakdown. So no. Under anaerobic conditions, the, 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 the body produces less lactate. So that is false. It actually produces more because the muscle produces lactate. So the right answer is B in this scenario. Then we have... This question. So the graph shows the rate of photosynthesis of a green plant varies with the CO2 concentration. So here we have CO2 because we do know for photosynthesis there's temperature, there's sunlight, and there's CO2. Um, it varies with CO2 at two different light intensities. The, the temperature is kept constant. So temperature is constant, very important. Um, so here we have the rate of photosynthesis as the CO2 concentration increases. So as we can see that um, 
these are just like the different plateaus because again, there's no denaturation of the enzymes or anything. In this case, this is just the light intensity because once it reaches a certain extent, then the rate of photosynthesis can't, can't increase. Um, so in this case, since we know that the temperature is constant, and since we have this plateau that takes place, we know that the, the only thing affecting it is the, high, the light intensity. So now, so we can tell from these high, low. So now we can tell that our limiting factor in this case is light intensity because it cannot be temperature because they told us temperature is constant. It cannot be CO2 concentration because they have the same CO2 concentration. So in this case, it is light intensity. So now we have the table shows the estimated total number of genes in several organisms. So we have all of these organisms. We have all of these genes, right? So what can be deduced from the information in this table? Throughout evolution, number of genes increases. No, this is not true. Throughout evolution, what happens is that um, favorable characteristics are chosen. And in other words, survival of the fittest. Okay. The domestic dog is more closely genetically related to the fruit fly than the human. So where is the domestic dog? 19,000. Fruit fly is 14,000. And we have the human, 25,000. So that's not necessarily true, though. This is not, it's not based on the number of genes. So we just looked at them. That's not really true. Um, so they're trying to trick you. The number of genes does not determine evolutionary success. Um, not really, because they're all alive today. So no. And the human dog. Oh, actually, that is true. That is actually true. Never mind. That is true. The hum humans produce about as half as many proteins as rice. No, so it is C because it's true. It does not determine evolutionary success. That is true because it's, like I said, favorably characteristic survival of the fittest does not have to do with the number of genes. So it is C. Um, chromosomes, of, uh, chromosomes number vary between species. Which statement refers to humans? Okay, so we need humans, right? And we need to talk about chromosomes. So uh, uh, Excel has 22 autosomes. Okay, so we do know that we have chromosomes, which are autosomes, and we have gametes, or like the ones that are like determine our sex, determine one sex, okay? So 22 are autosomes and one is that. So the total is 23 chromosomes. Okay. So an X cell has 22 autosomes. That's true. A sperm cell has 23. No, it has 22. An X cell has two X chromosomes. This is, this is technically not true. And a zygote has two autosomes. So this is not true. This is not true. And the XL having uh, two X chromosomes is technically not right. So we're going to go with A. Okay. So what is produced by meiosis in a cell of an animal? Okay. So we're meiosis. Meiosis, again, it's basically for the gametes which are the sex cells, right? It's kind of different. So usually in mitosis, the cell splits into two, right? In meiosis, the cell ends up splitting into four, okay? So we end up getting one, three, four, right? So we have four gametes, so two gametes, no. So we have four gametes, that's right. Each with not same number of chromosomes, each with different numbers. No, it's the same numbers because again, they're splitting, but it's going to be identical. So that's, it's A. Because again, they have the same number of chromosomes because again, they're daughter cells. Keep that in mind, keep my daughter cells, they're the same. Huntington's disease is an autosomal 
So autosomal means it's not sex related. So it doesn't have to do with actually the Y chromosomes. Uh, dominant. So this is very important. Dominant genetic disease. What are the chances of two parents that are heterozygous, meaning that they have so okay so keep in mind first so Huntington so it's H basically it's capital H why is it capital H because it's dominant so Huntington oh my god okay one second so Huntington's is in D is in H sorry and Norman is in lowercase h okay so heterozygous their genotype will be H H right so we're going to draw our Punnett square. We have H, 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 right? So it's going to be H, 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 and H, H. So what are the chances of two parents for having a child with Huntington's? Okay, with, keep in mind, the wording is very tricky. And you do that, it's dominant. So the percentage is... 75%, that's it. So this is 25, this is 25, this is 25. So these make 75, 75%. What is a community? So it's a group of individuals of the same species in the same area. No, they don't have to be the same species. This is false, so no. A group of animals that interact socially, again, no, because it can also like have other aspects, it's not, and doesn't have to be social, so no. A group of organisms interacting with the antibiotic, uh, abiotic environment, no. It's a group of populations interacting with each other within a, within a given area, because again, you have to keep in mind, it is a group of populations, it's not just one population, because here, same species means it's a population, but it's, in this case, it's a group of populations, not one population. A group of animals, it doesn't have to necessarily be animals, there's also plants and communities, and a group of organisms interacting with the abiotic environment. Again, no. Um, so now we have 18. So here we have eat what, what each animal eats. So the snakes eat mice, the eagles eat snakes, and the mice eat seeds. So we need to have seeds at the bottom, right? So Obviously not this, obviously not this. It needs to be seeds first, right? And after seeds, we need to have mice. Okay, so these both have that. So this, 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 this. Then we have snakes and eagles. Okay, they, the, 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 the order is right. However, however, the structure is wrong here and the structure here is right because we need more space. Why? Because as this is happening, 90% of if the energy is lost, right? 90% of the energy is lost. So here only 10% is conserved, only 10% is conserved. So the biomass, biomass is decreasing. And again, keep in mind, heat is always lost and heat again is energy. So this is why it's C. Now moving on. So we have this diagram shows the, the carbon cycle. What processes are taking place at X and Y? So X is autotrophs and other organisms and basically it's just the interaction. So this is obviously respiration because they're breathing. So this is what they're releasing to the atmosphere. So this is respiration. And carbon in deposits of coal, coal oil and gas. So this is basically burnt, they're burning them. So this is combustion. So this does not need anything else, that's it. It's not for synthesis because again, they're trying to, they said autotrophs, but they're trying to trick you because usually autotrophs take, because here the autotrophs and other organisms, they're releasing here, they're releasing CO2, right? Whereas in photosynthesis, they absorb CO2. So don't let the word autotroph trick you. Okay, but combustion is right. And um, so, yeah, now we know why, the, why this is wrong and why this is wrong. And it's not fossilization because, again, these are being burnt. So, yeah, that's it. Now we have question 20. 
mammals, birds, and reptiles have an embryonic tail that may disappear during development. What is the most likely explanation? So um, these are basically features that are probably analogous, um, meaning that um, that they just they have different uses. Or it does not necessarily have to be analogous, but they're just a similar feature. So mammals have lost their tail by evolution. No, because these tails still show up. They did spree during development. It's not throughout time. So this is the evolution part is wrong. So no. All vertebrates have a common ancestor. That is true because mammals are vertebrates. Birds are vertebrates. Reptiles are vertebrates. So vertebrates. Okay. Mammals, birds, and reptiles were identical when they were embryos. There's no evidence for that. Some physical similarities of vertebrates are analogous. Now, I did say that, but again, we do know that these, that we don't know if they're analogous because analysis, again, analogous are basically traits that have the same, they look the same, but they have different uses. And we don't know that they have different uses because it's a tail for all of them. So no, so it's B. All vertebrates have a common ancestor. Okay. So now we have the graph shows the proportion of bacterial population of Neisseria gonorrhea displaying resistance to antibiotic um, tetracycline. So what can we deduce from this graph? Bacteria with beneficial, okay, so we have year and we have resistance and we can see that keeps increasing. So we have bacteria with beneficial adaptation survive and pass on their genes. Immunity to, immunity to tet tetracycline is triggered by overuse of the antibiotic. That is true because once there is an overuse, a resistance takes place. Genetic variation in this bacterial population is increasing. We do not know that. And um, use of the trust line inhibits the growth of antibiotic resistance and gonorrhea. This is false because they're increasing, so it can't inhibit their growth since they're increasing. But we do know that the adaptation survive and pass on their genes because this can happen in different ways, whether it's through plasmids or other ways because they become... So we do know that it isn't, it's, it, it is triggered by an overuse. However, the overuse triggers it, but it continues through the pass of their genes. So it's A. Now we have 22. The plant in this diagram has vascular tissue and reproduces by spores. So I love this lesson. It's so easy. So we do know that this reproduces by spores and has vascular tissue. Okay. So we do know that angiospermophyta in D produces by seeds, right? Because they're plants. Okay. Fruits. So it's not angiospermophyta. It's not coniferophyta because also produces by seeds has ovules and we know it's not bryophyta because it has no vascular tissue so we know that our answer is philistophyta so this is really really easy um you just have to know your lesson i love this one this is one's very cute um 23 so this one needs a bit of reading so we're going to get through it with it so we have the traits Okay, so all of them, I'm going to use another color, black purple. They have the same trait except Q for one. Okay. Here. Um, so I'm going to use different colors because I can barely honestly see. These three have different traits. These two have the same one. Okay. Um, then I'm going to end up using even different, more different colors. Here, they all have different traits, except this one. Okay. So we see which ones have the most similarities. And here, they all have different traits, except this one. And then here, they all... Oh, here it's kind of different, but yeah. So now we need to see which ones are the most similar, right? So here they're all similar. We need to continue from here. Okay, so, so we know that P, so I'm gonna actually like 
this is gonna take a bit of time. I'm gonna actually do like a pattern. So here we have one, 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 one. Then we have like this color for here. Then we have, okay guys, I started like getting confused on the colors I used. Here we have one, one, one. We have like something like this here, one, one. Then we're gonna go to, yeah, oh my God, okay. We'll go to the yellow one, 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 one. Orange, one. Here we have the orange as well. Then we have this pink. And then we have here. Now we have this. So this is a very easy, cute way, which I really like. Um, so we're just trying to see which are the most similar, right? So we have P and R, which are quite similar. Okay, so we have P and R, which are quite similar. And we have, um, so P and R, basically, these two are similar, P and R. And then we have, S and T, which are quite similar. They only have one difference here, so S and T. And we have Q, which is the most different, so we just like put this shape around it. So this is why we need to look at it. So here, we can see that this is how it works. R and P are the closest, then S and T, and then Q. So this is good. Um, here, for example, Q is the farthest, which is also good. But P and S don't have the most in common, and R and T don't have the most in common, so no. And so here as well, no, no, and this is alone, no. So it's A. This is a no for those. Okay, so this was a bit time consuming, but yeah. So which process describes starch in human metabolism? So we have the first option. Starch is digested by amylase in the mouth. This is true. The statement is correct. Stomach and small intestine. It is not digested in the stomach because the stomach has a acidic pH. So it does not digest starch. Amylase digest starch into monomers of sucrose. No, that is not true. Glucose produces... Um, uh, uh, produced by digestion of starch can be stored as glycogen. That's true, especially in animals or as we call them, mammals or actually humans or animals. But yeah, we can just say animals. They are stored as glycogen. Often activity is, uh, occurs in the stomach at pH 2 false. The pH in the stomach is 2, but does not, it, it's not for basically acidic, not acidic. Okay, so for question 25, which part, which structures are part of the walls of both capillaries and veins? So we have cells, which is true. It is not true for pores, and it's also not true for elastic fibers. So in this case, our answer would be A, because not both capillaries and veins have pores, nor do both of them have elastic fibers. So now... Question 26, which method of transmission of HIV? So uh, what is a method of transmission of HIV? And what's its effect on the immune system? Okay, so basically, um, we're going to be looking at the like methods and the effect on the immune system. So breastfeeding is a method. Decrease the number of activity of lymphocytes. That is true because your body won't be able to fight. It right? cannot fight. Blood transfusion. Blood transfusion is true. However, overall, a general increase in, a, in antibody production, this is false. It's a decrease, actually, because, again, the body cannot fight. Waterborne. Um, so it is. this is true, the uh, general reduction, but this is false. And mosquito bites increase in the in, in number of active lymphocytes. This is just false. I don't think this method is correct. An increased number of active lymphocytes is also not very accurate. 
because here it's it's a decrease, not an increase. A cell from the lungs observed under a microscope contains a large number of sec secretory organelles. What conclusion can be drawn about the cell? So now we need to look at the words first. So it contains a large number of secretory organelles, so they secrete. And it's in the lungs. Okay. So it is a is it a type one? Um pneumocyte? Uh, no, it's not. Because it, it does not have um secretory organelles. It's a number two type, yeah, it does have a secretory organelle. It could be either type one or type two. No, it cannot be type one, cannot be type one. And it could be a red blood cell. No, because it does not have the secretory organelles, plus the blood cells are really small, so it's a type two. So the answer is B. So now we have question 28. This image shows a neuron, which is the function of X. So X is actually a myelin sheath. This basically helps propagate um, the signals, which makes it faster because they're able to jump between the roads of Ranvier, nodes of Ranvier. So the function of X increase, increases the transmission of uh, along the axon true, increases the rate of exchange of sodium and potassium ions, not necessarily, no. H holds bundles of neurons together to form a nerve, no. Determines the direction of action potential, no, because the, the, the direction is already determined, it's this way, um, to reach this part which spreads the signals. And um, this just makes it faster. It facilitates the speed, which is exactly what it does. Okay, because this, this is already determined. Now we have question 29. Liptin helps to regulate body mass in humans and mice. The image shows obese mouse O and normal mouse N. What hypothesis could, could account for differences between the mice? So we do know that this is obese, this is normal. And the, hypo the hypothalamus of mouse O stopped producing liptin. Okay, that is false. Adipose cells of mouse O are continuously producing liptins. No, because if that was the case, because it helps you lose weight, so it would not be obese. Mouse N has a defective liptin receptor. No, because liptin helps you lose weight. So no, and mouse N is normal, so no. Liptin binds to uh, receptors in the hypothalamus of mouse N. Yes, and this is why it is a normal weight, so it's D. Lastly, what is the most likely to increase in the presence of insulin? Um, so we do know that insulin actually helps. It's a positive thing. Um, it's to rate to for the rate. It increases the rate because again the rate increase, the rate of anaerobic respiration. No, it does not have to do with that. The chance of type one diabetes. On the contrary, it helps. The uptake of glucose by muscles, which is true. And the concentration of glu uh, glucagon, no, so it is C. So this is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and I hope you actually had a good day. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.